with the AFC East, and we're going to start with the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills went 13-3 and last year. They looked good. Josh Allen boosted his completion percentage by like 10% last year with the addition of Stephon Diggs at wide receiver. That was the biggest driving force in them becoming a, a massive contender last yeah. season. And, you know, obviously, uh, Chris and myself, if you watch this for any amount of time, you have heard us talk glowingly about Sean McDermott. He is a fantastic coach, defensive-minded, but he understands what it takes to win in the NFL. you got to have playmakers. Stephon Diggs is that playmaker for them. They haven't been able to find a running game. Don't know that you necessarily need it all that much. But uh, but they're looking around. You know, we'll, we'll see what they end up doing. They have done some interesting things with their draft this year, so we are going to talk about that. Uh, their needs were edge rusher, cornerback, defensive tackle, tight end, and safety. So we'll start off. They drafted two straight edge rushers. First round, mm-hmm. they got Gregory Russo out of Miami. He opted out last season. I think had he played and, and put up any kind of similar production to what he did the season before, I think he probably would have been a top 15 pick. But either way, you only saw one season of it, and he looks like a monster. Uh, on top of that, second round, they got Carlos Basham Jr. from Wake Forest, who is an absolute beast. He's a stud. Uh, round three, offensive tackle Spencer Brown out of Northern Iowa. Love that pick. Chris and I have watched FCS for a while. That, that guy's a, a hoss as well. Uh, offensive tackle Tommy Doyle out of Miami, Ohio in the fifth round. Marquez Stevenson out of Houston, wide receiver in the sixth round. Also sixth round, safety DeMar Hamlin out of Pitt. Uh, round six, Rashad Wild Goose out of Wisconsin, cornerback. Best name in the entire draft, Wild Goose. And round seven, offensive guard Jack Anderson out of Texas Tech. I am a fan of what they did. I like this. They they hit on a lot of their needs. You know, you can get a running back at any point, undrafted, whatever. Right. So I'm not worried about that one. But uh, but yeah, I mean they they hit basically everything else. They took some chances on some guys that I think can be absolute studs. I like what the Bills did here. Uh, I do as well. In my in my mind before the draft started, because Buffalo is one of those teams without really a whole lot of needs, a little bit of edge rushing help. But I was like, man, Travis ATN would look fantastic lining up next to Josh Allen. Josh Allen's one of my favorite young players in the league. I absolutely love Josh Allen. I grew up. Look, I was a 49er fan, but I loved those Jim Kelly K Gun teams with Andre Reid and Lofton. I love. So I have the Bills have a special place in my heart, and I absolutely love Josh Allen. I like what they did in this draft. I would have liked them see see them get a couple more, something on the interior of that defensive line. They were the worst red zone rushing defense in the league last year. I know their defense overall was good, but when it got close, they were giving up far too many rushing touchdowns. You want to make these guys throw, especially when you have corners like Levi Wallace and Tredavious White, who might be, you know, could be the second, third best corner in the league, you know, Ramsey, Gilmore, White, however you want to rank them. Uh, but I like what they did here. If Rousseau does any, it was a big problem for Buffalo getting pressure on the quarterback. All of their edge rushers are 30 years or above, so they needed to get younger and more athletic, and I think they did exactly that. Never hurts to bring over some big boys to help your quarterback. Look, it's no secret. Josh Allen is the end, the end, the beginning, the middle. <laughs> he is their run game, their passing game. He is everything for this offense, so you got to do everything you can to protect them, especially in the red zone. I mean, I know they tried out Zach Moss in the red zone and Singletary, and those are two younger, talented guys, but they're kind of meh. So I wouldn't have mind seeing a running back maybe two later on. That would be the only knock. But overall, I think they addressed some needs. Again, they didn't have a ton of them. Buffalo's going you know, to be right back where they were last year, contending for the AFC and contending to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like what they did as well. This is a team that didn't really have a lot of needs, and the one need they did hit uh, half. You talked about it, and 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 I've repeated this multiple times throughout these things is they needed they needed front help, defensive front yeah. help. This just wasn't the great draft to get that. So mm-hmm. you know, but maybe they can just make the best that they can um, if that's their only glaring hole. Uh, Figure it out through through coaching, through scheming, through through developing guys, and uh, and then and then maybe address it next year when when you might have some some better players coming out of college for it. But but no, I like what they did. This is a one of those situations where when you don't have a lot of needs, you can just take the best player available, and they were able to do that. I think they they got a lot of good talent. And most certainly, yeah. it also uh, off season, you know, free agency. They picked up Matt Breida out of Miami. They, uh, they picked up Jerry Hughes. Uh, Vernon Butler is there uh, as a defensive tackle. Uh, Mario Addison. 
Like, they drafted A.J. Epinesa last year. Like, they got guys that should be coming into their own, and they picked up some free mm-hmm. agents. Like, they... I think the defensive line will end up being yeah. fine. Matt Breida will play one quarter. Let me just tell you, he's well on the 49ers. Right? You're going to get one quarter out of Matt Breida. He's going to sprint. You're like, oh, my God, this is the most explosive running back in the league, and then you'll never see him again. That'll happen to Matt Breida. That's but what that, you only need him for one quarter if you got uh, Zach Moss taking a quarter <laughs> and you got uh, Singletary taking a quarter. That's right. You got, you know, whoever. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we'll, we'll see. But I, I do like what they did. I mean, th- this is a mm-hmm. smart-run organization. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, you know, in the coming years like we'll we'll yep. see all right moving and the on fans will be back next oh, year with yes. that good football team oh. i mean how about the great news today right <laughs> vaccinated people don't have to wear their di- i get my second awesome. shot in like five days and i cannot can wait i cannot wait just to hey, wa- wipe that I'll go ahead and tell around you. And- go ahead and tell you how you're feeling today uh, is probably how you'll be feeling the day after your shot. Now, Chris had no issues. Uh, hey, oh, it was nothing everybody that i know of including myself got that second shot and mm-hmm. the next day Completely worthless. I was Brilliant. dunzo. I was so, I was top of the morning, man. Some would argue that I'm worthless every day, so I'm not sure much will change. But uh, there's that. Yeah. I can I can buy it. <laughs> I can buy it. All right, moving on from there, the Miami Dolphins. They went ten and six last year. Surprise team. Everything looks good under Brian Flores. Um, you know they have some needs. Obviously, this is a young team. Uh, still not sure what they were doing by cutting Calvin Oy, but. Um, Okay, you know, I mean, if, if you got a plan, why not stick to it? You know, they, they cut him, and they uh, and, and basically the Patriots pick him up for like a bag of chips, as Chris would say. But, uh, but they needed tackle help. They needed wide receiver help, center, running back, cornerback. And, uh, honestly, what I'm seeing looks pretty good. Here's what they did in the draft. In the first round, they had two picks. They got Jalen Waddell at number six out of Alabama, wide receiver. Edge rusher Jalen Phillips out of Miami, Florida. Uh, they, Number one or two as far as edge rushers go, and I think that that was a really good pick. Uh, second round, they got safety Javon Holland out of Oregon. Again, stud player, can make plays. Uh, offensive tackle Liam Eichenberg out of Notre Dame in the second round as well. Uh, he's an offensive tackle. Tight end Hunter Long out of Boston College. And don't sleep on this kid. He was mm-hmm. used a lot at Boston College, but obviously if you're playing football at Boston College, not a lot of people are going to know your name. This guy can absolutely play. He's uh, he's going to be a stud for them. They got him in the third round. And then you had two seventh-rounders to take flyers on. Larnell Coleman, offensive tackle out of Massachusetts. Not going to lie, I got no idea who this kid is. And uh, Jared Dokes, running back out of Cincinnati in the seventh round. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of this. I, I, think, I think the yeah. Dolphins are showing that they are a well-run organization again. They really are, and you just got to be so excited if you're a Dolphins fan and seeing how this has turned around since that pile of uselessness Adam Gase left the team. And they they knocked it out of the park. I love that first round. Jalen Waddle's going to fit beautifully with what Tua does, and of course they have a rapport together. Phillips, you know, you, you're right, the first or second best pass rusher in the draft. That defense was already really good last year for Miami. Love the Liam Eikenberg pick. Bring in, again, we talk about it, bring in those Notre Dame offensive linemen, protect Tua. They signed Will Fuller in free agency, so now Tua's going to have a full complement. You know, you'll have Will Fuller for about four games until he gets hurt, unless he's doing <laughs> steroids again. And you'll have Devontae Parker for about eight games until his – Yep. His hamstring is pulled, and hopefully Jalen Waddle will stay healthy there. And uh, Mike Kosicki, so I, I like what the Dolphins did. I thought they did a fantastic job, and they just continue to knock it out of the park year after year. And, you know, of course, they can thank Bill O'Brien for that because they're going to have assets up the wazoo for that uh, trade of uh, Laramie Tunsil, and uh, that is what it is. And uh, all the Houston fans can look at Miami and see what could have been and look what Miami is and be heartbroken. Love what the Dolphins did. Team on the rise. Another team that has have a soft spot for because, you know, Dan Marino, that's who I wanted to be when I was a kid. So uh, <laughs> this is the last year that they have all the extra assets from Houston, though, right? Like, they're right. done after yes. this. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Merit. No free picks. Um, Brian Flores and those guys seem to be doing an unbelievable job there. I, I like what they yeah. did. I think they've got a lot of talent. Um, I'm curious to see how it actually plays out on the field. Uh, they they just watching them play football every week looks like a struggle. Okay, mm-hmm. they play bad teams badly and they play good teams well, and it's really strange. They don't beat anybody really bad, and and they kind of always look like they're struggling to get first downs offensively. Um, it, it, they play tough, hard nosed defensive football, and they're tough to score on. 
I just wonder at what point in time that's going to change. They just all, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, always look like they're having hard times getting first downs. Yeah. I agree. Well, you're right. You're right. 100% uh, right. The the GM for them, and Chris no Ryan Fitzpatrick to save them this year when they, when they can't yeah, throw the ball. So Tua's going to have to evolve and play better. And it's I mean, a lot I, of pressure. I, I specifically think Jacoby Brissett went there because he thinks he can play there. I think he mm-hmm. went there mm-hmm. over staying in Indy as a free agent because he, he feels like I got a shot to play here. I can buy right. that. Uh, Chris Greer is the GM there, by the way. Uh, this guy yeah. is a wheeling, dealing son of a gun. Like he is, yeah. he has made super smart moves. Um, you know, was the director of college scouting all the way up until 2015, and took over as general manager in 2016. He's only worked two places, uh, with the Dolphins and with the Patriots, and and he did go. most of it in scouting. But since he's been made general manager, man, they have made some good moves. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of what they're doing. Fan well, of what they're doing. I mean, when you doing. can fleece Bill O'Brien, I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of like stealing, though. I feel like I feel like more people should have been able to do it. The fact that like uh, an organization that hired Cliff Kingsbury and the Dolphins were able to do it, um, I feel like I feel like other guys. Yeah, should have a been lot able of other people could have done it. Uh, other people overthought mm-hmm. it. They were like, wait, wait, wait. There's there's a catch here in there. There's something that's going right. on with this Hopkins trade. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That's that had to be what was up because I, I cannot believe that Hopkins didn't end up in in New England for uh, for a second yeah. round. Well, pick they were now. gonna they made it clear they weren't gonna trade him in divi- in in conference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I basically suppose. fleecing Bill O'Brien's like winning like the spelling bee at the Special Olympics, you know, for one of us. That's basically <laughs> what happened there. Do they have? I don't. I don't even know if that exists. Yeah, that's an iffy joke. It's real that's, iffy. But you know what? Real iffy. This country laughed, is but... so pussify lately. It's time to toughen up and get over ourselves. I've had enough of it. Participation trophies in every damn sport. Like, don't make a joke about this. That. Oh, shut the hell up. Let's rock and roll. It's time to <laughs> toughen up, America. We're silly. That's why China's gonna pass us because we're silly and weak. Yes. Time to toughen up. I love it. I. Love it. Moving on to the New England Patriots, it is time. It's time for Chris to get to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide and all the draft picks that Bill Belichick has used (laughs) on Nick Saban's players, and I am excited about it. Uh, The Patriots Mm -hmm. did not look great last year, but Cam Newton obviously looked way better before he had COVID than after. Don't know if that was an effect or, or if people just figured out what he was doing. Obviously, we'll find out some this season if Cam can get back to what he was before he uh, he caught the bug and things went kind of downhill after that. So they he did look kind of like, I mean, we were talking about him for the MVP after the first four weeks, weren't we? Oh, you know, really? Not, not, really? not MVP, but he was, he, yeah. we, we thought the Patriots offense was going to be just fine. Yes. Uh-huh. And, and instead uh-huh. it went way downhill very quickly. Yeah. Um, and then they come out and they spend the uh-huh. most money in the history of the NFL. The first day of free agency, they lock up dudes that they want. They got weapons. Uh, they don't have a ton of wide receiver guys, like super skill guys, but their tight end position is locked down, man. No problems there whatsoever. So along top or uh, alongside of that, something that they've never done in free agency, they also had a really good draft, at least according to yeah. draft experts. You know, I'm we'll go with what they needed first. Wide receiver, quarterback, cornerback, running back, linebacker. So basically, they needed skill players and they needed some help, you know, on defense because they're getting a little older, you know, a little long in the tooth. They need some young, mm-hmm. fresh guys. And they knocked all of them out of the park. I mean, just killed it. Uh, first round, mm-hmm. they take Mac, uh, Mac Jones out of Alabama. Second round, Christian Barmore, interior defensive lineman out of Alabama. Edge rusher in the third round, Ronnie Perkins out of Oklahoma. Fantastic value pick there. Uh, round four, running back Ramondre, uh, Ramondre Stevenson out of Oklahoma. Again, awesome pick there. I think he's going to be awesome, um, especially if you can put him in with all the other running backs that they got. He doesn't have to be the guy. Linebacker Cameron McGrone out of Michigan in the fifth round. Sixth round, Joshua Bledsoe, uh, cornerback out of Missouri. Offensive tackle William Sherman out of Colorado in the sixth round. And then they take a flyer on a guy that I really, really like. In the seventh round, Trey Nixon out of uh, UCF. He's a wide receiver. So, I I think they kind of hit on this draft, man. I, this is my favorite draft of all of these teams. If for no other reason than I understand the strategy, I know where they're going, and I think they got some of the best players at, at the spots where they drafted them. Okay, so I'm going to disagree just a little bit. Now, I, I don't hate what they did, but here's where the Patriots' needs were coming into the draft. Quarterback, 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 wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. 
First of all, Cam Newton cannot hit the broad side of a barn. He's the worst pocket pat. Last year, watching him try to throw from the pocket, a timing route to Julian Edelman or any of those guys, it's just painful to watch. I, I would take Ben DiNucci from the Cowboys over Cam Newton as my quarterback right now. I'm dead serious. Cam Newton needs to be like Jacoby Brissett and Taysom Hill. Goal line, option routes, maybe play a little tight end. The dude can't throw the football. So I thought New England did a great job taking Mac Jones at 15. It was the obvious choice. They had to do it. All the moves they made in free agency, you can get all the tight ends you want in the world. You can have Tony Gonzalez and Travis Kelsey or, you know, Ozzie Newsome. Cam Newton can't get him the football. Mac Jones can. So I do like that pick. My problem is, who the hell is Mac Jones going to throw to besides those tight ends? Nikhil Harry, look, I know there's some upside there, but he hasn't looked like much, and a lot of that could be attributed to uh, bad quarterback play. And then what else? What else am I seeing on the outside? Who is going to scare them up top? It's just going to be – so I'm just supposed to believe that Hunter Henry, who's had injury issues, and Jonu Smith, who's had injury issues, are going to carry the Patriots to the playoffs and in, uh, in a division with the Dolphins and the Bills. I'm not buying it. Uh, I would. I think. Look, I like the players. I think Barmore's a good player. I love the pick of Mac Jones. I think they nailed that 100% on the head to take this team serious. He's got to be their starter day one. Cam Newton can never step onto that field as their starting quarterback, or you cannot take them seriously. That's a JV offense if Cam Newton is your quarterback. So I love the first round pick. The rest of it, I think they needed more help on the outside, so I think they missed the mark a little bit. Their defense, it's going to be a great defense. They're going to be healthy, and we all know Belichick's defensive mind. This defense is going to be tough to score on. Do they have enough weapons to score enough points to get them over the hump? It's a little iffy for me, and I just don't I just don't see any explosivity in that offense whatsoever. I, I cannot believe that you were going to sit there and talk trash about the wide receivers after they went and got Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar, <laughs> and they got Jacoby Myers. Yeah, they got, Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> they got I mean, Christian Wilkerson. And like I said, I, I like Trey Nixon probably more than most people, but uh, – but yeah, He's no, I, I see where you're coming pick, from, Gary. I know he, it's a He's flyer. A seventh round pick. This you, is a guy you like. You they don't never need know. Flyers. They need receivers. <laughs> that, yeah. When they moved up in the second round, my first thought was, "This is Rondell Moore." He's right. they, they want versatile guys that can play multiple positions. Rondell Moore is a utility knife that can be in that 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 backfield. He can come out of the backfield. He could have taken Julian's spot. Thing. Yes. Um, I, I would have loved to have seen them take a chance at, at Terrence Marshall right there, something like that. The fact that they took another defensive lineman in, in a not good defensive line draft is is just ridiculous. They got all their defensive players back except for uh, Patrick Chung uh, from from the the COVID opt outs. This defense is going to be substantially better than they were last year without yeah. drafting or signing anybody because they had like five guys that were starters that opted out last year that are right. all going to be back. Okay. Right. So their only defensive need was safety. All right. They didn't move up to get more, which is what I thought they were might do. And I would have been okay with that, but they need receiver help. And that that's, they, they don't need another defensive tackle. They need yeah. receiver help. That's what yeah. they should have done. Especially in that division. Who's the team that's running the ball down your throat in the AFC East? Yeah, the you're Dolphins definitely not, not worried about the Jets, the Dolphins, or the Bills or, running the football on you. Bingo. Not at bingo. all. You are Josh correct Allen about that. Might, Josh Allen is the only run threat, and he's only going to run the ball outside. Yep, exactly. That's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts to think so, about. So, I, I, I'm not going to question Bill. I just work under the understanding that Bill's never going to draft well. Okay? He mm -hmm. just not. He hasn't my entire life of watching him coach football. He just cocks up the draft. His free agent signings are usually better than anybody else's. Most people don't think so when he does it. And then afterwards, it always works out. But he, his drafting is just not great. It's just not. I mean, he did knock one sixth-round pick out of the park, if I uh, remember correctly, just back in the day. Well, yeah, no, he, throw, he <laughs> the takes a lot of bites. At, he, like, he takes a lot of bites at the apple. All right. And he drafts a lot of guys, but all of his best draft picks are all these late round guys. Yeah. He can't go in the year he went and got Nikhil Harry as his number one wide receiver in the first round. That year, there was like three great wide receivers that went right behind him, all in the second round. What are you doing, Bill? You yeah, took we, the one bust out we of were all very, the good wide receivers that went that year. We the were very one confused. Bust? We were we were very confused. I wonder how how Harry would be if he had not dealt with all those injuries, right? 
Like, it, but he right. dealt with injuries in in college as well. Like, it, it, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Let's keep giving the kid excuses. I'm, that's what we did to Sammy Watson, all, Watkins, all his entire career. Is oh, he's not he's not healthy, and then oh, he doesn't have the right system, and oh, he doesn't have the good quarterback, and then oh, and then finally we get him with Andy Reid, fully healthy with the Chiefs, this offensive machine, and he puts up okay numbers, good numbers, but not great numbers. And finally, people are like, eh, maybe he just didn't really good. And, and then he has the nerve to say, well, maybe I'll just go to another team and win them a Super Bowl, as if Sammy Finn Watkins is the reason they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Get the hell as out of he, he, he bugs the shit out of me. No. He bugs but, the absolute shit out of me. I just don't understand. But but this is the bet I've made with Bill, okay? I love the Patriots. I will support Bill. I just never get excited about the draft because I understand that half these guys – aren't even going to make the damn team. They're yeah. just not. Yeah. Well, you got to be stoked with Mac Jones, though, right? You have to be. You have to be. At least it's not Cam Newton starting. It's obviously not going to be uh, who's the other kid that they the everyone that, wanted I'll to see. You, and... let, me, let me tell you what I'm happy about. I'm happy that they didn't move up for him, okay? Yes, if exactly. That's, that's who you land on, you need a quarterback, okay? Mm -hmm. And as long as he's the only quarterback left available out of the five, I'm all right with that. I'm not upset mm -hmm. about it. I don't hate it. He's now my quarterback, and I got to support it. Had they moved up to get him over Fields or, or, or you know, some of those guys, I would have been pissed. I would have been yeah. real pissed. Well, who I wanted was Fields. Who I when all when Dan Orlovsky, who I thought was a piece of shit for reporting the stuff that he reported, <laughs> started doing that. All I kept thinking was, "This is the best news I've ever heard in my life." Please let that man fall. And then when he falls, he's going to have a chip the size of Ohio on his shoulders, and Bill's going to get him, and it's going to change football forever. And we're going to just wreck people. That's all I wanted to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bears yeah. got half smart for the first time in their life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Closing out the AFC East, we're going to move to the New York Jets. And there's never really been good things to talk about with the Jets in uh, in at least a decade. Obviously, when uh, when Ryan was there, you know, you had uh, uh, you had the franchise, you know, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Sanchez. Um, you, you had all kinds of different stuff going on. This was a good team at one point, And since then... Nothing good, but uh, yeah. but you know, and now you got Robert Sala coming in. It looks like a, a new day. It looks like you got two starters in the first round. I mean, lots of stuff. Obviously, they had needs basically everywhere. Um, but quarterback, tackle, cornerback, uh, linebacker, and running back were big needs for them, and uh, and they hit on basically everything. I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> we'll go through this list, but at, aside from the Patriots. I think these guys did the best job in the draft for drafting for need, drafting for value, drafting for potential, everything else. They had a lot of bites of the apple, and, and I think they hit on a lot of them. Uh, quarterback Zach Wilson with the number two pick from BYU. Um, you got your guard or tackle, whatever you want him to be, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. Uh, also in the first round, they had to move up to get him. But And, and while I don't necessarily agree with moving up because I think you would have been able to get him where they got him, Oh, I disagree with if, that. If that's your guy, like, go go do what you do, right? I think too many people need an offensive line, and I think he was mm -hmm. the third best offensive line yeah. in this draft. You're probably yeah, right. He was. Don't go get him. You're not getting him. Definitely the best interior alignment in the draft. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I disagree with you there. I think if they don't move up, he's not there. And you, you might be right about that. Second round, they got Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. Uh, love that pick. You know, you and mm -hmm. I, Chris, have talked about Elijah Moore a lot. Uh, he is a speedster. He is He's awesome. He's awesome. Uh, running back Michael Carter out of North Carolina. This dude was a beast for them last year uh, for North Carolina yeah. and Mac Brown and that whole bunch. Uh, so getting him in the fourth round, had kind of a steal in my eyes. You know, everybody talked yep. about Javante Williams being the uh, the better of the two. Look, you, you can't convince me of that. Like, both of them were uh, superstars at that school. Round five, this is where you start taking flyers. Safety, Jamie and Sherwood out of Auburn. Yeah, he's a playmaker. Cornerback Michael Carter, the second out of Duke. Um, cornerback Jason Pinnock out of Pitt. Then you get to the sixth round, Hamsa Naziruddin out of Florida State. Nicely done. <laughs> you got cornerback Brandon like Eccles out of Kentucky and uh, defensive lineman Jonathan Marshall out of Arkansas. All of these guys can play. I, I think the Jets did a pretty good job of scouting and figuring out where they'd be able to get value with, the, with a bunch of these late picks. I mean, they had three picks in the fifth round, three picks in the sixth round, and took a bunch of dudes that that you have seen actually be able to produce. I, I'm a fan of this. I think they did a yeah. an outstanding job. 
Me too. I think it's the best draft in the division. Uh, I always have a soft spot for BYU quarterbacks being a 49er guy, of course, because I love me some Steve Young and even a little bit of Ty Detmer. So I love me some uh, BYU quarterbacks. I don't know a ton about Zach Wilson. I didn't watch a ton of BYU games, but obviously everything I see, this guy has upside through the wazoo and he, and he should be really good for the Jets. And obviously he's going to be better than Sam Darnold. Uh, that Michael Carter pick in the fourth round, when I was watching the draft, everyone I was watching had this guy as the best available guy going through the third round. So this seems like a real steal here. And you got to remember, we're talking about a Jets team that was toting the rock with Frank Gore, 457-year-old Methuselah. Frank Gore was their, their bulk of their carries. And then, you know, these guys they bring off the street, Adams and uh, the Michael P. Ryan, I think, or one yeah. of the P. Ryan was got, over there. Somebody, Samaj P. Ryan yeah. or Michael, I don't know which one. So I think they nailed it on the head. Elijah Moore, I love that pick as well. Get some weapons for that offense. I think the Jets nailed it out of the park. The best interior lineman in the draft. A lot of people, I was hearing a lot of people saying Zach Wilson might have more upside than Trevor Lawrence. I don't, I'll leave that up to you guys. You guys are the experts on that. He's, uh, uh, let me, like let me go on and stop you. He's, Zach Wilson is very much boomer bust, right? Um, okay. he, he sees all of these, uh, when, when you watch him play, you can see Patrick Mahomes. You can see, like, this guy that is super athletic. They, I'll tell you what they called him his freshman and sophomore year. He was Mormon Manziel. That's what they called him. Uh, he's he can throw it from any angle. He can run the ball. He's he can scat away from any kind of defensive pressure. He's awesome with that. But his junior year, he had eleven touchdowns and nine interceptions. Didn't play Oof. well against good defenses. And obviously, the BYU schedule last year kind of soft. So it's you can see the potential. Um, sure. He's not necessarily there yet, but I mean, he he's going to be the starter. You got James Morgan behind him and Mike White. Like, that's your other two quarterbacks. Honest he's going to gonna God, be the guy. I watched every NFL game twice for the probably the past 10 years as I cover the NFL. I've never heard of those two players ever <laughs> once in my entire life. I don't know who the fuck they are. I'm dead serious. Who are they? That's I, I got no idea. No idea. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So, uh, go, go ahead. Continue on. I didn't want to, uh, you know, distract too much. Oh, but no, we, that, that we was it. That was it. I like what you just did. Won it, won it here. Yeah. And, uh... I want to hear Chris bag on Zach Wilson. I feel like that's coming. No, not, not, not at all. I'm the Zach Wilson defender. Okay. Out of oh, all okay. the guys, we did our live draft. Every one of those guys bagged on, 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 uh, from West lot, Gary, same thing, but there, you know, you talked about the, the schedule being soft. How many good quarterbacks have we seen come from small schools before where they ended up being just fine. That's ridiculous. This kid can make every throw. If he is quote unquote, a bust, it's because the jets organization failed him. All right. That, that is, there's no other reason for that other than that. This kid can play. He can make every throw. He's exciting to play. That team is just garbage right now, okay? Yeah. So, while I think they've got some good guys coming in with him, they're all going to be rookies, all right? They're all going to be carrying somebody else's shoulder pads for a long time. And those guys have no business making somebody else carry their shoulder pads because they all suck. There's not a playmaker on that roster right now. So, yeah. um you know, I, I think he can play. I think he's going to be just fine. I like him a lot. And uh, once again, like I said, I think they got the third best offensive lineman in the draft. I would have loved for that dude to have fallen to, to Cleveland um, or, 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 you know, for Cincinnati to uh, trade back up and, and, and get him something of that nature. But, um, you know, I, I'm not crazy high on Michael Carter, the running back. Uh, it, it, and my reasoning is this. If there are two running backs that came out of the same college that both ran the hell out of the football very successfully and they run completely different, I just work under the assumption that it was the system. Okay. That, 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 that's something that, that North Carolina was just doing better than everybody else. And the odds of them both coming into the NFL and being any good is pretty slim. Okay. That's a, so, so totally fair. I'm not a big fan of that. Elijah Moore. I love that pick. I think Elijah Moore is explosive, crazy exciting. I thought he should have been a first round guy, um, fall into the second round only because guys in front of him have bigger names. I assure you that Elijah Moore will finish as a better wide receiver than half of the wide receivers taken in front of him. That's just going to happen. Go. This guy can tr – the game is is now going to a deep ball game, and this guy tracks the deep ball better than any dra any wide receiver drafted this year. Nobody tracks the deep ball. He is Stephon Diggs 2.0 when it comes to tracking the deep ball. He goes and finds the football, and he runs to it. You don't have to throw it to him. Um, I think that's an amazing thing. Uh, Sherwood, the same thing. You're talking about a guy that played big boy college football at Auburn 
against LSU, against Alabama, against Georgia every year, against A&M every year. Um, he knows how to play defense. He's he's been you know in some good schemes. He'll he'll be able to play the rest of these guys. You know they they've got. They're just flyers, all right? They're, they're late-round yeah. guys that you're hoping a few of them could come in and play, and guess what? There's a really good shot for them, too, because there ain't a whole lot of depth on that team in front of them. So, Yep, you were right about that. Don't don't forget also undrafted free agent Kenny Yaboa, uh, tight yeah, end. Like I, I, I thought <laughs> Kenny Yaboa should have gotten drafted. Shocked Same here. he didn't. Yeah, that's that's a huge un, uh, 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 undrafted signing. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, also, free agency for them. Uh, Greg Van Roten, right guard, brought him in. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they they filled up their wide receiver room. Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, Keelan Cole. Like, they brought in some guys that have some experience that can probably help out Zach Wilson uh, quite a bit. Uh, they brought in Carl Lawson, you know, defensive edge help. I mean, they, this team looks uh, better on paper right now than they than they did any of the last three oh, years. Well, right at the like, top, you have Robert Saleh, who is an absolute monster and a great defensive mind, replacing the pathetic and useless Adam Gase. So right there, right I'm off the very, top of the I'm board. very curious to see the offensive uh, scheme that they're going to run and, and, and what yeah. they're going to do there, because this is this is a guy I don't know a whole I'm, lot about. I'm trying to think of successful dual running backs taken from the same school. All I can think of is Jerome Bettis and Ray Zellers back in, like, 1992. Am I, is there so anything the two, else? The, so the two most famous is Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown. Ah, uh, very and, good. Yeah. Cadillac, I think, would have been fine, but his entire career in the NFL was injuries, injuries yeah. and yeah. Ronnie was a stud with the Dolphins yeah. for a long yep. time. Um, yep. That's that's the only two that I can remember where both guys got into the NFL from the same class, and both guys were really good. Right. Cadillac being really good is very, you know, quotation. One or two years. Yeah. He had the, he had a thousand yard year as rookie year, I think. Yes. Didn't he? yes. Yep. When he yep. was healthy, he was a monster, but when he was, his availability was just non, it was just right. non-existent. Yep. Right. You are correct. All right. We are done with the AFC East. Thanks for listening to the winning cures, everything podcast. The website is winning cures, everything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and at winning cures, or you can email us Gary at winning cures, everything.com or Chris at winning cures, everything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.